So this is the Monday, November 8th, 2021 meeting of the Conway Select Board um, at 6 p.m. feet, and we will have a joint meeting with the Board of Health at 6.30. Um, the first item on the agenda, uh, approve the Select Board meeting minutes of October 25th, 2021. But they're great. Sure. Okay, motion to approve. Aye. Okay, Second. all in favor? Aye. Yes. All right, so, we, and then we have, um, let's see, we have three, four warrants. So we, we have, ah, Jan Warner. So we have the accounts payable warrant for $187,235.91. The payroll warrant for $109,960.52. The payroll deduction warrant for $27,916.22. And we have the Conway Grammar School Student Activities Warrant. That's a different number. Um, that's W, that's SAFO1 for $769. And um, so I, I had the, my, Michael, the account, town accountant, did forward all of those to me, and I guess to Bob as well, um, ahead of the meeting. So we've had a chance to look at look them over. And um, so that being said, I'll move to approve those four warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members. Bob. Hi. Well, in Erica's absence, I'll start. Uh, okay. uh, we've had a couple of conservation commission meetings, um, and we've had a couple of cable commission, cable committee, cable advisory committee meetings, um, and uh, and then Saturday we had a wonderful hike of the Conway Forest, which. I'll call that a meeting, very well attended. Phil and I were there. Uh, Allison was great. Mary Wigmore was wonderful. And uh, I, th I think it was w a wonderful event for a lot of people in Conway. Uh, forest people and new people who haven't been paying close attention to what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that forest walk was pretty neat. Uh, they got a, a good chance of just talking about the all the unique things about that um, uh, that that forest. So I just got a text from Erica. She'll be joining us shortly. Um, but but you know the, the neat thing about that too was how many people turned out, and um, you know the the only regret that I had is that. that some of the people that really um, had the most, I don't know, not, not extreme opinions, but m opinions that were most um, uh, challenging to some, to the foresters giving the project. Some of those people really didn't show up. And to get the full continuum of opinions um, and views in the town, it would have been nice if they had. Um, so as aside from that, the, Sorry to say that union negotiations have commenced. Um, and yeah, so there was a couple of those. And I, I you know, I, I, I honestly, my, my thing as it has been for years, and I'm, I, I say this to everybody, is to just talk about the importance of, to, of going to town meeting um, for, for educators. For, and, and, and so I'm always amazed at like sort of the, negativity uh, uh, of the reception of my ideas of, for, uh, for, for um, uh, you know, to, to, to mandate that teachers go to the town meeting uh, wherever they reside every year. And, and because it's non-monetary and it's not within the, the allowable things that you're allowed to collectively bargain for, my own, our own negotiating committee always has issues with it. And then, um, you know, aside from, you know, the, you, you, say you're, you say the administration's not going to keep attendance and it's not going to have a monetary, uh, you know, penalty if you don't go. 
and yeah, and, and it just, it, it, it never gets traction, but I'm always amazed when we have our own town meeting. Like I look around at this negotiating room and I see 10 or 15 members of the union that I know live in my town. And I know that they, you know, I, I go to town meeting and they're not there. And so I just wish that the people that have the enthusiasm enough to show up for negotiations have the enthusiasm to show up for town meeting and share their enthusiasm with the town. But it's a uphill struggle, Bob and Erica. Good evening. I'm Hi, sorry Bob. I'm late. I, I misread the agenda. I was looking at the joint meeting with Board of Health and I some I just in my mind, I was like, oh, well, we're meeting at 630. And so I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> oh, that's OK. Um, we we approved the warrant. You already missed us the, reading you know, the warrants. It was OK. Really all right. Yeah. I was going to vote so, on. So, <laughs> uh, so now, now it was just meetings attended by select board members, and um, you, we didn't get to ask you. So. I, I, none since our last meeting. Okay. Um, so public comments, um, unless Jan has a public comment or someone else. Old business, none. New business. Um, uh, is Jan? Jan, are you here for something specific? Nope, I'm not. Okay, good. Always um, welcome. Yes, new new business. Appoint town administrator to Americans with dis as the Americans with Disability Act compliance officer. So, uh, aside from the fact that you're, we're going to all keep needing to print new business cards for you to, and make the print smaller and smaller to fit all of your numerous titles. Um, why would you want to do that? This is tell, us, tell us, tell us. This is actually because Tom was the ADA for Conway. And so yeah. being the town administrator, it seemed to me to make sense. We need one. And so, um, and I know that there are some authorities asking who our ADA compliance officer is. So it seems to me that it kind of makes sense. So. I was asking for your approval to just step into Tom's shoes as, as the town's ADA person. Uh, I think it's a wonderful idea if we're having a discussion about it and I appreciate <laughs> you doing it. <laughs> yes, we are. So, and, and it can, so your, the idea comes with documentation attached to the agenda. Uh, the, an Americans with Disability Act notification, a ADA grievance procedure, um, uh, the certification to whom it may concern. I guess that's your appointing letter. Yeah, so literally all I did was take these documents from Tom's files, put my name in his place and my information in um, so that we would have these on hand in case you... I don't think we could get Tom to do it again. So, <laughs> um, so, so, so I guess the the and that the letter of November eighth is to make yeah okay. So we would all sign that. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to go in and sign that. Okay. Um, if if you so appoint me. I move that we appoint the town administrator as the ADA compliance officer. I'll second it. Thank you. And the appointing letter to calls you the designated ADA coordinator, not yeah. the compliance officer. Oh, okay. You could do both. <laughs> well, there's a, so the, there's one that says the to whom it may concern is that says town of Conway's designated ADA coordinator. So, <clears throat> yeah. So is that, is that what you want to be? Compliance officer sounds kind of cool. I'm more sorry, badass. I must have had the wrong thing in my head. But yeah, right. ADA coordinator. Yes. Okay. So that's yeah. what you want to be. Yes. Yes. Sorry. All right. So, Bobby, you, you may have already made the motion or Eric already made the motion, but maybe we can rephrase the motion yeah. to be the designated ADA coordinator. Thank you for correcting that, yes. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, so corrected. I'll second the updated motion. Okay, all in favor, aye. Aye. Yes, aye. yes it's unanimous. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, 
Um, consideration of a letter of support for legislation promoting extended producer responsibility. So this is um, good transfer station policy stuff. <clears throat> fresh, fresh. So, um, so I take it this this was your idea, Veronique. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's, <clears throat> it's basically a letter to support um, several pieces of pending legislation, which would have the effect of transferring a lot of the packaging and other recyclable recyclability of products onto the manufacturers. Um, it's, it's quite a burden on municipalities to deal with a lot of these products that are not able to be recycled and also have bad packaging. There's a lot of, um, uh, and, and there's no real way for, for consumers to deal with it. So since this legislation is pending and there are many states that are considering it, um, and because the state does tend to listen when municipalities say we're in support of these things, I thought I'd at least bring it to you for consideration for you to discuss. Uh, it, 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 is Natalie, is this one of Natalie's articles? War, pieces um, of no, I know Joe Comerford has signed on to one of them. Um, Natalie probably is. I, I honestly haven't spoken with her about it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <clears throat> So, so, I mean, just so with this, with this EPR legislation, it, it the the theory behind it is that um, it helps towns re with reduce costs of recycling disposal, and gives producers the incentive to sell products that are easier to reuse and recycle by requiring those producers to bear the cost of the recycling or disposal of their products. And pending legislation includes uh, printed paper and packaging, paint, mattresses, and electronics. So um, I guess it's sort of like bottles and cans that, that, that you know, they fought kicking and screaming all across every state all across the country to have to reimburse people the nickel or whatever for each bottle or can. And it's sort of something like that. It would be a scheme like that, I imagine. Um, no, I, I, isn't oil that way now? In other words, when, where you buy oil, you have to, you're allowed. They have to accept it if you bring it back to them. Used oil. Yeah. Well, I know ca car batteries are now too. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just increasing yeah. the number of those kinds of products. Yes. Yeah. All right. So um, it would conceivably re reduce costs of our transfer station operations. Or or reduce cost of people of Conway. I mean, you pay yes. when you bring a mattress twenty five bucks. I think you bring a yeah. mattress to the dump. I I just found that out, much to my dismay. Yeah, because I didn't find it out to the week after I took someone else's mattresses there. Yeah. Um. um uh. I will point out that um, there is also pending. Well, the the twenty thirty solid waste master plan has in it um, mattress and textile bands, which means that we're gonna have to recycle mattresses. So just wanted to put that out there because it may end up actually costing us more. Not to be the bearer of bad news. Then, yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's not so bad. So does anybody have a um, desire to support, a, to um, sign a resolution in support of producer responsibility legislation Wow, overwhelming enthusiasm there, Ron. I'm expecting Erica often jumps in and, and makes the, you know, uh, yeah, makes the motion. So uh, I, I would I would move that we that we support Veronica's uh, support Veronica. for legislation of the extended producer responsibility legislation. And and uh, and that'll mean we'll be signing a letter in support of that. Yeah. I assume. Yes, this is the actual letter here, and I will get the tonnage and, and cost numbers for you. Great. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye.
It's unanimous. Eric is nodding. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Let's see. The discuss mask mandate, we can wait till 634. Transfer station price adjustments discussion. Did everybody see the new price adjustments provided for discussion? No. I did not. In your agenda. A fee table. Oh. <clears throat> um, a fee table for bulky items. So, um, yeah, I, so, so the transfer station pricing draft for discussion. So it would, a fee for, for disposal of bulky items. Wooden furniture and doors, $5. Upholstered chair, $10. Love seat, $10. Couch or recliner, $15. Sleeper sofa, $35. Futon, $10. All carpets, $10. Toilet, tub or sink, $10. Appliances, freezers, refrigerators, air conditioners, and dehumidifiers, $12. The, um, non CFC appliances, washers, dryers, water heaters, free. Tires, car and truck, $5. Tractor, $75. Semi truck, $20. Electronics, all CRTs, TVs, monitors, laptops, $15. Large console CRTs in cabinets, $30. Large screen TVs, um, over 36 inches, $20, all other electronics free. Mattresses and box springs, $25 each. So we're not voting on this tonight. This is for discussion, um, but- What are we charging for any of these things right now? Mostly nothing, except for the tires. I think uh, tires are $2 a piece right now. And, and that's all tires, regardless of size. Mm -hmm. uh, well, no, uh, um, no, the tractor one went up oh. significantly, but yeah. they, they used to have it both mounted and unmounted. And th this, the price proposal that I've got here, um, I spoke with um, Janamine from Franklin County, and I also reviewed all the surrounding towns and what they're charging. And a lot of these were her suggestions for just how to make it more simple kind of lumping some things together rather than having 8 million different things on the list. I, I do want to point out the, that currently the only thing that we charge for that goes into the bulky um, dumpster are mattresses. Everything else is free. And it costs an awful lot of money for the town to get rid of that, um, usually once a week. But we do charge for scrap metal items that the town actually gets revenue for. Um, so in this, in the appliances, <clears throat> it does say freezers, refrigerators, air conditioners, and dehumidifiers, because those are the four things that contain chlorinated fluorocarbons or CFCs that we have to pay to get evacuated. But then we put those items into the scrap metal. So then, you know, but we do have to pay to, to, to take care of them. So what I'm, I was proposing for a discussion is that we, do away with the fee on the appliances that don't have CSCs so that what goes into our scrap metal is basically free, but then start to charge for the bulky items that go into that other roll up. So <laughs> instead of saying all other non-CFC, you, you could just say all non-CFC appliances. Right. Sorry, it shouldn't say other. You're right. It should say all non-CFC. Yeah. The others do have CFC. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So if, you know, I, I have a question, though. If we wanted to um, keep the fee, let, let's, let's for, for discussion, keeping all the fees as they are now, but um, raise the same amount of revenue through an increase in the sticker price from $10 to whatever, what would we need to come, what would the sticker price need to be? I don't know offhand, but I can tell you that the pushback, the Board of Health, I happened to be on the Board of Health when they increased it from $1 um, good for life to $10 annually. And the pushback was pretty incredible um, from people not wanting to pay $10 every year, which is the lowest sticker fee I've seen anywhere. 
I, I could certainly try to figure that out, um, how much it would cost if we just put it on the sticker fee. Yeah, I had somebody from Deerfield yesterday that didn't believe me when I told them the sticker was only $10 here. What do they charge in Deerfield out of curiosity? 75. 75. And you have to, and you have to buy a bag. All your trash has to go in oh, wow. purchase trash bags that are like a buck and a half a piece or something. Yeah. On top of the 75 or whatever it is. I mean, I, I, I you know, I actually think that that one of the things that I noticed in, in the people that go up, even people that have a mattress right now or a tire or whatever, nobody ever has the money, the eight, you know, whatever. Nobody brought a check. Nobody realized that, that it required funds. It's always, you know, that people get rid of something first and then, the, and then they find out what it costs. There was always, there's always, it's very glitchy. The, the uh, you know, an a la carte thing, an a la carte menu always, involves more interactions and more transactions than uh, one stops, whatever. So, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, to, to me, it's sort of less nickel and dimey if it, the sticker just costs more or I don't know. Are these, are all the bulky items things that currently go into that big, that big giant bin? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I know that they've, <laughs> I've gotten rid of some of these bulky items and the transfer station attendants. I mean, this was, I mean, not recently, but certainly within the past like five years. Um, and they've thrown like, you know, a toilet and a sink into the compactor for me, not <laughs> into the, not into the bulky item bin. Hmm. Shouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> I recently brought a toilet in and I, and I, or a sink, I think it was. And, and I did put it into the, uh, into the bulky item, but I didn't get charged for it because, uh, you know, right it's now free. We're, it's free right now. Yeah. Except for mattresses, right? Except for mattresses. Yeah. And I mean, I, I've been putting a lot of stuff in that bulky thing and it, it always <laughs> amazes me how they open the gate for it, you know, and an hour later, somebody puts a couple of couches in there and the thing is three quarters filled up just by two couches. And, um, you know, it, it, se it seems like, there's this pent up demand for that thing. It just, it amazes me if you don't get there right when it's empty, how hard it is to get anything in there sometimes. Well, I've also seen people haul stuff out of the bulky item bin yes. and take it, you know, take stuff home. Yes. Um, Good. So I, okay. I've, yeah, I've done, I think I've done I, I mean, twice. I've, I just, I wonder whether people would be, um, I don't know if you get pushback, you know, like, well, I just paid, you know, $10 to get rid of that chair and someone's taking it away now. So it's not filling up the bin, you know. I would like to point out that safety wise, nobody should be going into any of the bins. Right. <laughs> well, see, right when they right, right when the bin first becomes available, the side, the side thing is opened and it's just like a six inch, you know, six inches off the ground. It's 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 really pretty easy and feels safe going in and out of it when there's hardly anything in it. Um, but, and you have to go in and out of it to put stuff in it. Well, you can chuck it over the side. Which and, is, but yeah, like which, a metal bin. Which doesn't work for mattresses or sofas though. They can be pretty heavy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, so, um, you know, I guess that's something to think about. Talk to people. I know that's, Controversy. It will be controversial no matter what. But that's why the Board of Health had the good common sense to, <laughs> to so, walk from it. Do we have too many devices to post together? Uh, no, I'm going to just slide over just so it's a little bit easier. Hold on. I'm going to try to sit here for I'm just going to move yeah. over here so we're yeah. not Pat, on should, top of each other. If, Pat, you should mute. One, of, one or two of you need to mute. Or share or just use one computer. Yeah. Well, it's, there you go. Okay. Um, okay. So, so, so that's... Lori, can you mute yours? 
What? Why don't every, everyone else could mute for the moment? Because I'll do the introduction part. Okay. If people could mute just for a minute, then whoops. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry for that little technical snafu a little bit. Uh, I wanted to thank you for accepting our invitation to meet tonight. Speaking as for our board, I feel that it's important to have an open and frank discussion about the mask the mass uh, mandate and that it's vital for the health and well-being of our community. We appreciate your willingness willingness to devote some of your meeting time to this important conversation. We'd like to keep ourselves unmuted, but as you can see, that's probably going to be difficult because I hear myself over and over. Um, we ask that either you raise your hand or use the hand feature on Zoom so that we avoid interrupting the speaker mid-thought and we acknowledge your request to speak or, um, or to request clarification of a point. I think we all can agree that there isn't a single person that hasn't been affected in some way by the pandemic. And we can confidently say that no one that we personally know has not been reached by COVID fatigue. And that everyone that's here, wish, um, everyone wishes that there was no need for a mask mandate. And the question before all of us is whether that mandate will be lifted. To start the discussion, Jackie will lead the medical side, who leads the medical side of the Board of Health, would like to share some information with all of us. And I respectfully request that people mute so that she can do that without hearing herself. Is Jackie here? Go ahead, Jackie. I'm here, but for some reason, everyone is frozen. Oh, I can hear can you. you hear me all right? Yep. Erica, can you hear me all right? Mm -hmm. I can. Okay. According to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 111, Section 31, it states, and I quote, the Board of Health may make reasonable health regulations. It is our opinion based on best practice that the wearing of masks indoors at this point of the pandemic mm -hmm. is the reasonable regulation. The county remains in the substantial risk category for community transmission. Most recently in Conway, since Halloween, there have been four positive COVID cases. With a population in Conway of roughly 2,000 people, that indeed would put us in the high risk category. It would amount to 200 cases per 100,000 people. Granted, most weeks we have an average of one or two positive cases and occasionally zero. We are a product of our environment, however, thus we must look at the county as a whole, not just Conway. Even with one positive case, it translates into 50 positive per 100,000 people. Any questions or comments? I don't see any. Oh. Uh, I have my hand up. I could, I could do it this other way if you want. Go ahead, Bob. But, no, that's fine, Bob. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, as a select board member, I'll say that I support the Board of Health. And if you guys want us to continue using masks, um, I, 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 I'm not sure where this issue came from. Are you under pressure to get rid of the mask mandates? Um, is that coming from the select board? Or is that, you know, I'm not sure where it's coming from. But, but just recently in, I think it was in next door Conway, uh, one of our Conway residents posted that they just came down with COVID. They were fully vaccinated. They had the booster and they being boosterized, they began running their life without wearing a mask and going 
going to social events where there were people who didn't have a mask. And at one of those events, there was somebody that didn't have a mask and was positive and spread COVID to a number of people, including someone from Conway who, who was fully vaccinated. And, and now they didn't get sick. You know, they didn't get terribly sick. They didn't go to the hospital. It only lasted a few days, but they knew they had COVID and tested positive. And they were probably contagious at that point, you know, to other people who could have gotten it from them. Um, so, and I admit, um, I, I've begun not wearing my mask quite as much as I was before I got my booster shot. And now I feel invulnerable again. And I th no, think that's a bad idea. I, I, right. And so, so it's really good for me to read these cases. Um, and uh, for now, I'm all for wearing masks in the town buildings. If I mean, I think that's what this issue is about. Go ahead, Jen. Um, I, we were um, requested at an earlier time to have some sort of a, a end date projected. At least that was my understanding. And um, I don't think we can do that without having uh, a, a particular bench benchmark, which is what we've set for the sort of countywide. Um, but that that was my understanding that the select board was looking for a specific date or specific rationale as to why we wanted to keep the mass mandate in place. So um, but Jan, Jan has her hand up first. But yeah, so I um, might have been one who asked for that rationale. And what I heard back is that um, when the risk became a moderate risk in Franklin County, that we would then consider uh, lifting the mask mandate. So I'm curious to the numbers that you're quoting because I've looked the numbers up myself. And when you just said that one positive case translates to 50 per 100,000, I don't quite understand that because by my estimate, there's 70,000 people in Franklin County. So one in 70,000 does not equal 50 in 100,000. So from what I calculated on uh, figures that I got right off of uh, the Massachusetts uh, website, somewhere around 16 in Franklin County, and this was maybe a week and a half ago, I put these numbers together, but it was somewhere around 16 per 100,000, which would put us in the moderate risk, well within the moderate risk. So I'm, I'm just curious where you're getting your numbers from and how those calculations actually play out. The number one that I was referring to is uh, one case in Conway, Jan. But you so I'm getting a lot of feedback based on Franklin to. County. But you said there's currently four cases in Conway. Yes, but I said some weeks there may even just be one case. And Jan, what I meant was if there's one case and Conway has a population of 2,000 people, that translates to 50 cases per 100,000 people, which is what the um, community transmission chart is all about, about the high, substantial, moderate, and low risk for uh, trans community transmission of COVID. So if you could be clear, are your standards based on Conway or are they based on Franklin County? Our uh, standards are based on Franklin County. I was just saying that, for instance, with Conway having four positive cases in a week, that if for Conway only, and it's a very small picture of the whole uh, of the whole thing, with four positive cases, that trans uh, translates to two hundred per one hundred thousand. 
four cases to 2,000 is the same as 200 to 100,000. And 200 to 100,000 is in the high category. But no, we're not looking just at Conway. And you have to take an average of the whole county as a whole. Um, and the county as a whole is currently in substantial risk. And it's not that we said that we would drop the mask mandate at moderate but we will definitely reevaluate it and hopefully drop it who wants to wear a mask. So what is your Franklin County number? And is it based on a seven day average or 14 day average? I'm seeing both numbers reported. I, I do not have a Franklin County number. I know that we're in the sub substantial risk category, which is 50 to 99 positive cases per 100,000 in the community. How do you know that? That's not the same number as I gathered. Um, through FERCOG. I, I would encourage you to look at the, the Massachusetts website. Mass. Uh, I have. So, so, uh, um, so, you know, I've, a couple of things. So for, first of all, I, I know I shared in conversation with um, Veronique sort of comments that I, because I do hear comments from people a lot, not so much um, critical of one thing or another, but the, the, the way that mass fatigue that I hear it expressed out there is in when, you know, what, what can we work towards? What can I do to, to, to make the mask? Get, you know, what's the standard that we're, that we're going for? If it's one more person getting vaccine, I'll wear a sandwich board in front of the post office. If it's, you know, people want to be told what they can do to have this go away. And um, that's the frustration that I hear a lot. And I, I and, and I know it, it's, it's bigger than that, but, but, um, <clears throat> you know, I, 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 and it's also something that like recent public appearances by Fauci and so this Sunday, that Sunday FDA that commissioner, um, you know, that, that, that talked about how that there, there's a, a sense now among the federal regulators that there's not being enough attention paid on the end scenario, on the criteria um, that this will go away, that it's still sort of up in the air um, for, for local people, local boards to local government to make these decisions on. And, you know, when, when I think back about the beginning of the, the, the first sort of phase uh, last year and how it, the, these five, the, the five town board of health meetings that we were going to every week and the contract, the contact tracers that would be on there. And they would really differentiate between the positive cases. And I, th I, I don't really hear anymore. Like we're, we're not, it, it's like the concept of if a tree falls in the forest, but no one's there to hear it, does it count that, you know, does it really fall at all? If, if somebody tests positive, and they're, they don't interact with any other human beings and they're quarantined for 10 days and they're already vaccinated and there's no ill effects and they have no impact on another human being getting or not getting it, does that still count? And, um, you know, and I, I, like I remember, son, I remember you know, them talking about a big cluster in Sunderland, but, oh, it was, it's all UMass housing and they just go back and forth to UMass. We're not worried. We're not even, it's like, we're not even going to count them. And, oh, and crazy. it's, but now we're sort of counting everybody. I don't know, it's, but when I hear that there's people positive that don't have any symptoms that aren't sick and that are quarantining, I'm like, that to me isn't justification of anybody else for anybody else to change or to do something that they don't want to do. I mean, I, 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 I support, I, I support your decisions, whatever you do. And, and, and I also want to say that um, we didn't, the select board did not call you to this meeting. This is not me or the select board calling you to on the carpet or whatever the phrase is to browbeat you into something, whatever. I'm, I, I don't really think that's in our, this particular select board's DNA to do, even if we were going to do it. But um, you know, we're just we're just talking, and and I appreciate your your willingness to reach out because you know that this is important to the town and to have this conversation, and I want to thank you for it. And that's all I'm doing is talking to. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I'm not specifically not criticizing. Um, no. And, uh, okay, we're and, uh, No one. No one thinks that you're criticizing us, and we were th we were thankful that you accepted our invitation to have Great. this discussion because I Great. think we're all in agreement that having a discussion is warranted. Right. Um, and so, no one feel as as far as I know, uh, I can only speak for myself. I don't think we feel like we're being put upon. We just can't give you a specific end date as to when it will be lifted because we have to follow the guidelines that we are following. So that's kind of where that came from. Um, well, I mean, yeah, but yeah, there's so much, there's so many unknowns in, in how things are still out there. You know, people can, even though Conway is low and we, you know, if we lift the mandate doesn't mean that someone's going to go to Costco and bring a whole bunch of, you know, if a family goes to Costco and brings a whole bunch of COVID back from West Springfield or another town, how we have to still protect our citizens. So that's kind of um, how I, how I feel about it. So, and I guess the other the other the other thing is that you know when when we when we Conway um, with the Board of Health at Conway and uh, when when we did the mask mandate this last time, um, at the same you know within that week or two period, all of our neighboring towns did that, and and we saw we saw just within a short period of time Deerfield go go back on it, and gradually many of our neighboring towns have done away with it as well. In, and, and as I look at the rates, those towns all have, um, uh, well, th those towns have always had higher rates than us all throughout right. the thing, and they still do. And, and, you know, my understanding about the Deerfield situation was that that particular situation had just as much to do with, um, uh, you know, uh, business owners outrage as it did with public health, um, you know. But we, we, we lack that center of gravity that there's a, enough business owners that, that can, you know, storm town hall. But, um, um, you know, but, 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 but this is something I hear all the time, too. Like, how, come, how can they do it and they have higher rates than us? Why are, why are we still doing it? And these other towns that really walk around puffing their chest out like we're the big bad board of health, we're, you know. We, we got our own, we have our own board of health person and, you know, that goes out and does everything da, 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 and they make decisions um, that are based on other things, apparently, than just actual purely health. So, I, what, you know, what, what's, I mean, I, I never know what to say when people say that. So what do you say? say that. That's we are, I say this, we are, I, can't, I don't have to oh. bother you on Who's to say that we are the way we are now because we have the mask mandate? Mm -hmm. Go, go ahead. I'd like to say, um, mm -hmm. uh, regarding Sunderland, I think they really have tunnel vision to say, oh, well, there's a big cluster that goes to UMass. You can't tell me those UMass students go to, don't go to 7 Eleven right down there and Dunkin' Donuts. I think that's really very narrow sighted. And I, all that we are trying to do is what's best for the community. And I know that you're not arguing that, but I think that's the uh, answer to why some of these larger places and they're looking at the bottom dollar maybe rather than looking at the health of the community. I um, was in one house vaccinating a homebound person and it, to make a long story short, it turns out that their attendant knew he was symptomatic, tested positive for COVID. I was double masked, thank God, and I did just fine. But, uh, you know, had I had no mask on, had I sort of just thought, well, it's not much fun wearing a mask, uh, that could have been another story altogether. And I, I think when things are going good, it's easy to say, oh, we're doing fine. But 
it would only take a family member becoming ill and that's one too many people for me. So the best we can do is masking and social distancing as much as possible. When our county through FERCOG, which is uh, who we are really listening to, changes from substantial to moderate, then we will most definitely reassess the situation. Yeah, I mean, but un until that, you know, when I, when I, and when I hear when I hear language like, um, you know, one case is too many, my, my my brain works in like, well, actually, you know, one case really isn't necessarily too many. I mean, we, we you know, one one highway death is too many. But in order to prevent air, any single highway death, we would have to outlaw the private use of automobiles. And we don't do that because we say one highway death is not too many. Um, and we make those policy decisions in, as communities, large and small, all the time. So, you know, to me, at some point, at some point, this ends with it all oh, continuing. COVID is going to continue in our lives from now until forever. And it's going to continue with the occasional case and without mask mandates. And um, because we can't have mask mandates forever, especially in our schools. I mean, that's the one. That's where it really does. There's really good data that it affects kids learning negatively, that kids have to be able to read adults' faces and, and they have to learn to read people's faces when they communicate and that it's essential. And that, um, you know, that there has to be there has to be some sort of way out of this besides no cases, besides we need we need no cases or we're willing to do this for ad infinitum um, to prevent that one case. So I know I'm sort of exaggerating what you said, but. Well, two things. I think that if we could prevent deaths on the highway by wearing a mask, we'd all be wearing masks. We're talking about relatively simple ways. Come on, can you yeah, I'm trying. Uh, we're talking about a relatively simple way to keep cases at bay. And as far as the schools are concerned, thank goodness the five-year-olds and older can now get vaccinated. My granddaughter just got hers uh, yesterday. Doing Wonderful. great. Yeah, yeah get yeah. those masks on. And, totally and, agree. And the implication being there that that is the way out of the school mask mandate, which I totally agree with. So, um, Jackie, it looks to me like everyone who's in the Board of Health room is not muted. I, I thought you guys were going to mute and you're continuing to echo a lot. Uh, I'm just not sure why no one's muted, or at least. Uh, Devan, Devon has her hand up, and I don't believe she's muted, but I go to. I have no audio at all. I'm completely oh. disconnected. I'm the only one not. Uh, it's not having your audio on. It's muted. Right. Anyway. No, we know that. Um, okay. Everyone is muted now except for me. No one appears muted to me. Devon, Devon has her hand raised and I'll, I'll mute. All right. Um, Jackie, oh, that, Jackie, that doesn't work. You got to turn your volume down. I know, but it's coming from you. Okay. It will be echoey. It, is it echoey for you all? Yeah, okay. Jackie kind of said what I was going to say, Phil, in response to your words is, from my perspective, this does go away when more people do have vaccinations and when people have a greater awareness of the fact that they are COVID, even asymptomatic and where they're spreadable. Um, I personally have a niece who's got COVID right now and she's vaccinated, but she did exactly what we all are saying. She went out and she went out with her five friends. It wasn't even a big group, but one of her friends is a hygienist and has been working throughout. And she didn't know she had COVID until it was too late. And she infected all five of the friends that she had. 
and nobody knew. And my niece went home to her four children and her husband and they got COVID. So it's not, they're, they're not going to die. Thank God. Um, but there are people that can be, you know, she thankfully had four children. She didn't go to the family wedding that we just had where there were 300 people. Um, but I guess my point is that this virus is not one where we all know when we have it right away and when we're spreadable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, from my perspective, when I vote yay to a mandate, it's with that knowledge of the people that aren't protected because they are immunocompromised or they're older. And that those are the people that we need to be respectful of and take care of because we have a lot of old people in our town and us young people need to step it up and say, you know, this is for the better good of others, not necessarily ourselves. So I just reiterate what Jackie and Kat have said in that we need to continue to monitor the county overall to see where that fits in. And with this, the kids being vaccinated this week and next week with the Vax bus is going to be a tremendous change, you know, I think for all of us in the comfort level of not having spreaders that can harm grandparents and everybody else. So I don't know how, I don't know if that helps in your response to any of those comments you made from people that say those things, but that's from my perspective where I come from when I'm talking to people. It's really not about ourselves, but of those that can't be protected for one reason or another. <laughs> that was my email alert. That wasn't, that wasn't a sound effect that took place right when you stopped talking. Yeah, um, I you know I don't I don't. It's it's nice touching base with you. I I do wish that um that this ends, <laughs> not this conversation necessarily, this pandemic. I'm I'm ready for it to end. Just speaking personally, um, for the sake of everybody who is going to watch this, because people do tell me they watch the Zoom yeah. meet select board meetings. Could you talk about what's going on at the school? Or, or, or is the school having a You've mentioned a, a special vaccination process for the kids. I've been in touch with a town nurse and she is working uh, with Meg Birch, who is in charge of the uh, school union town nurses. And indeed, Conway is invited to the um, bus vaccination a uh, mobile vaccination clinic on the 17th. I'll be down there helping out just as a uh, volunteer, not as a medical person, because the staff uh, of the bus will handle the vaccinations. And they're hoping to take all the spots that they have available, use them first for children and secondly for adults. Yeah, I, I checked. I, I was hoping as a school committee member, I could get in there and get my booster because I'm, I'm, I get to get it in four weeks, four weeks. But I'm not staff. I'm not staff. Get in a big Y. I mean, it's, it's, not I know. Now. I it's, know. You know, it's, 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 it's the easiest thing in the world. It's not like it used I to know. be. I know. Take in a homebound elder and I'll vaccinate you. <laughs> <laughs> You, you do, do not have to be a, um, a member of a school staff to get a appointment on the vaccination bus. You either will need to get your vaccine if you need it, or if you need a booster, or if you have a child that needs a vaccine, all of those are um, 
avail all those appointments are available for people. You just let them know what sort of booster you need and they will bring it and they'll also bring 10% above whatever they have have been requested for to cover people that are like walk-ins and unexpected people. Yeah, but I think when they do the school classes, they're not they're they're segregating them from the general public. I don't think they're doing general public with with those students. They, that same bus in that same location might be, but not at that same time. So that's that's what I was talking about. So um, okay. But, all right. All right. Is there anybody else? Anything Thank else? You very much. Anything else? Um, I'm sure the board, of health, the board of Health seems to be in better spirits now that the weight, the burden of the transfer station has been lifted from them. <laughs> wouldn't you say? Wouldn't, wouldn't everybody say? I, I didn't hear that. I was muted. It's and okay. Don't worry. No volume. Don't worry. Um, I heard you. <laughs> Good. I couldn't agree with you more with my blessing. <laughs> Good. Well, it hasn't been looked at from mine. Thank you so very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I do. With nothing else to uh, to to wrap this up, I thank everyone for their time and attention, and um, I look forward to a continued dialogue. And as things progress and change, I look forward to. Uh, creating another event like this. And I really appreciate your support and your help. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. I'm signing off. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll All right. Um, Items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. This is where I have appointment of interim emergency management director. Yes, but there was, sorry to, to back up, license renewal for the Conway Inn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, where is that form? Let's see. I don't think there's anything in the packet. It's just that, you know. Oh, uh, last year we lowered the, the license fee for the Conway Inn. And, and I would hope that we do that again this year. I thought we did it for everyone. I think we did it for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So what is, uh, so the, there wasn't, the, the form is not in the packet. It, it, was there, um, uh, what is, what is the price for the, Sign um in Vittler's license, I think the is what it's called. the Victualers. Is it the mm -hmm. Victualers license or is it the jukebox license or is it the... five hundred? Is what? It's five hundred for the um what do you call it? The license. Twenty five for the Victualers and twenty for the jukebox. Did you know, catch that? Is that what we charged last year, or that's what? Well, no, that's, oh. that's the regular amount. Okay. And what yeah. did we charge last year? We have everything. Yeah, everything was cut in half. Yeah. I think we might have done that two years in a row, actually, because it's been two pandemic years. No. Okay. Just just last year. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's still a pandemic business year, and business is still really off. I know that it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that. If we did it last year, the same rationale applies, but that, um, you know, that it's, it's been a hard year for our businesses and, <clears throat> and it's been a hard year for everybody. So I'll make a motion that we, that we renew the three licenses for the Conway Inn. That's what we're looking for, I believe. Yep. yep. And at half the rate, once again, like last year. I'll second that. Aye. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Un unanimous. So we will, yeah. Who who signs the license renewal form? Is that all of us or just me? Doesn't matter. We'll find it. 
Yeah. We'll find um, it. All three. All three. Great. Hey, all of them. Um, let's see. So, yeah. Items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting, um, appointing an interim emergency management director. Uh, yeah, so um, we're supposed to have one of these. We don't. So um, the, the, the idea has been advanced to appoint, um, to appoint me as the interim emergency management director. Um, and I said, okay, so, but that would have to be appointed by the rest of the select board. I ought not to vote on my own thing. I, I would like to recommend that Phil take over as interim emergency management director. So, I second so, uh, that. You, you're gonna make that motion, Erica? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'll make the motion. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay, that sounded unanimous. I'll vote aye and you'll vote aye, so we're all good. And I'll abstain. You volunteered, so I'm yeah. sure you can vote aye too. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, thank you, Phil. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, town administrator update. I believe we have a double update. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so sorry. I actually had it that last week when I was sick, but I didn't get it out in time and I couldn't have spoken anyway. So, yeah. So, um, just to let you know, with the transfer station, lots going on there. Um, we should be getting back the compost um, that we were had before. Yes, I'm okay. very excited about that. Sometime in November, we, we were hoping by now, but um, it should be soon. And I've also asked that we get two um, 55 gallon drums. We're gonna use one at a time, but for cooking oil, I know cooking oil is allowed to go in the compost, but it's not good to have too much. So um, it, anytime you, and with all of us with septics, I think it's nice to have an option to bring fats to get rid of. Um, so anytime you're making a meal, you can just kind of save your bacon fat or your chicken fat, or if you fry a turkey for Thanksgiving and you wanna get rid of all that oil, you can bring it to this drum. So hopefully that'll be in soon. And will that be taken with the compost by the same people? Or? No, it's, it's a different company. Okay, but okay. Yeah. yeah, but I'll probably try to fit it inside the compost trailer just because we don't want like a bear knocking it over and getting a, a fat high for the winter. No. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the transfer station goes through now three different, the landfill the transfer station goes through three different inspections. Um, we get a third party inspection for the transfer station management itself, which Janamine does for us every year through Franklin County, Solvay's Management District. This year we got our first OSHA transfer station um, inspection. And also the transfer station is on top of the wood waste, our old wood waste landfill, which is still being monitored and still has to have a third party inspection every couple of years. So um, that, um, and Jan used to be able to do that for us, but she's not doing them anymore. So I've asked Fuss and Emil to come in and get that done for us before the end of the year when it's due. Um, and we have had, a, we did do our, the inspections. We'll need to update a couple of things at the transfer station, but I did get a new heater in for the TSAs in their shed. Um, and that should hopefully be all installed by the end of the month. So it will be nice and toasty for the, the season. Um, I did finish the, we had some revisions that happened to the municipal vulnerability program scope, which ended up adding $4,000 for us um, for purchase of properties, which was great. And um, I also applied for the MIIA grants to actually help cover OSHA training and some of the materials we need at the transfer station for the attendance. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've submitted the Reconciliation report, the last one, the, the, I don't know if you're aware, but the CARES the, for, um, funding is winding down. And so we had to do a last reconciliation where um, I requested the amount of money we would need to cover everything that we've expended. And then the final report to close everything out on that funding will be December 3rd. Then we start moving into ARPA. Yeah. Speaking of which, 
Our first ARPA working group will be meeting on November 19th. And then the town hall renovation committee that was started, I think, just before COVID hit, I believe. And I don't think it's never met. met. And yeah. never met, right. So the first meeting is going to actually be tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> we also have a website uh, kind of working group. And we met, we had a presentation from Rocket Fusion, um, which is a company that's used by many of the surrounding towns, including, including Greenfield. We're next going to have a presentation from Civic Plus. And then um, those of us who use the website the most often are going to come up with our list of what are the things we really want to make sure we have um, going forward. And if we, however, we redo the website. Um, we did have a financial team meeting to review the management letter from the last audit. Um, and I'm sorry, I should have said FY20, not FY21. Um, it was a good review, and one of the things I wanted to mention is that cybersecurity, I'm sure everybody's been hearing this, but that is a huge concern out there right now. Um, so that was certainly men mentioned in the management letter, and um, Bob Armstrong and I and Roy Cohen have attended, at least one of, somebody from Conway has been at one of the, at all of the FERCOG trainings that they're having right now. Um, and I'm excited about this because, well, one, it's rather scary, I'll be honest. The, the bottom line is it's not a matter of if, it's when we, we're going to get hit. So um, the company that is doing the training is going to be providing in a sample protocol for an incident response. So this is something that um, I'll get Roy and I and a couple other people to, to work on this sample packet. So that's it for my update. Thank you for listening. <laughs> is everybody else getting a lot of uh, um, mail ashore messages of all of the spam yeah. that mail ashore is catching? Uh -huh. Not yes. just me. So, uh, yeah. Except it comes at odd. It doesn't come. That doesn't come at the same time every. Like that has come at like three and four in the morning sometimes. And I, um, and always in the time that I forget to shut the volume of the phone off. But. <laughs> Uh, but uh, so I, I don't quite know how that works, but it just seems to come at random times. But other than that, yes, I get it. Um, it appears to be working. I don't know how we ever lived without it, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, select board member comments or concerns, Erica. Anybody, anything? No, I'm just really excited about recycling coming back, or um, sorry, composting coming back to the transfer yeah. station. <laughs> a lot of people are going to be pretty happy about that. That's great. Yeah. None for me, Phil. All right. Same with me. The ma mail was from the Pioneer Valley, Upper Pioneer Valley Veteran Services District. Um, they voted to continue oper. They voted to exist for another three years. And we are a member. Um, we must vote whether to continue on as members for the next three years. They they tell us they want us to because Greenfield pays fifty six percent of the district budget, and the remaining forty four percent is split between all the other towns. What do we get um, from Veteran Services? Like, what exactly do they do? Um, they do a lot actually for like veterans, but um, gosh, I actually have no idea what they do. I'm no sorry. Uh, I should know. I should know. And they do a lot and it's serious. And um, they, uh, there, there's a, the, the number of towns is like 25. It, Ashfield, Burniston, Buckland, Charlemont, Coleraine, Conway, Deerfield, Irving, Gilbert, uh, Hawley, Heath, Leverett, Leiden, Monroe, Montague, New Salem, whatever. So basically um, their budget is really modest. They, you know, I, I, I they do, um, uh, it's a resource and referral service so that they have, um, it, it, it assists like veterans getting in touch with the services. It's like where veterans, the one-stop shop that they can go to get po pointed towards all the services that exist. Yeah. I mean, um, have we ever not participated? 
Well, there must have been something before that, before the Upper Pioneer Valley Veteran Services did. There must have been something before that. And um, I do know that it is Greenfield centric. I do know that, that it's like their, their offices are in, in the Department of Veterans, the, the whatever, the town, Greenfield's big enough that it has its own veteran services department. And the, this upper pioneer services district is actually physically located there. So, um, but if there's like 25 towns and they get to spend less than half of what Greenfield does, I'm okay with that as a matter of philosophy. Um, so I would say we go ahead and sign it and keep going unless anybody has heard anything critical about it. Um, and I, I do know a previous representative of it is um, right across from the Conway Inn. Uh, Right next to the Historical Society, former transfer station attendant. Well, oh. I would certainly make a motion that we continue as member. Um, I second that motion. Okay. Um, I would say all in favor say aye. Yes. Aye. aye. All right. So we'll sign and that. That looks like just you have to sign that, Phil, not, yeah. not us. But it's. Yep. Although um, I don't I don't know how that'll work. Uh, you, you know, the. The, just you you can sign it on the letter that we got, but it has places for all of the other chairs to sign. So, well, it's it's they have a an agreement that they wanted us to sign, and right? It, yeah, it's they don't. Yeah, sure. Okay, very good. Um, it, yeah, it looks like just I signed it. Okay. Um, other than that, any announcements mm. besides meetings? Um, okay. Next meeting is two weeks from tonight, the 22nd. Sounds right. Yep. Monday, Monday the 22nd. That's not a Thanksgiving thing or anything like that right yeah monday the 22nd at 6 p.m on zoom and with that we can stand adjourned so move thank you Alrighty. thank you everybody <laughs>